So we've been using the word mappings, informal mappings. Uh, people also use the word transformation to mean the same thing. So we're now going to tend to call them transformations, but really they're, they're mappings as well. So a linear transformation is a mapping uh, where f of z can be written in the form alpha z plus beta, where alpha and beta are any complex numbers except alpha is not allowed to be zero. If alpha was zero, then you'll just get, this would be many to one. Um, you'd end up with uh, not a very interesting map. All points get mapped to a single single point. Um, okay, so what's, what's the interesting thing about linear transformations? Well, under a linear transformation, um, all that happens to uh, a shape, if you, if you imagine transform, uh, applying a linear transform, transformation to some shape, then uh, the shape stays the same shape, but it could be enlarged or uh, reduced or rotated or translated. Okay. So we can actually, um, for any linear transformation, it's actually just a, a combination of one or more of three more basic transformations. So first of all, we have scaling. So scaling simply means W equals S times Z, where S is, a, is now a real number. And if S is less than one, we tend to call that a reduction. And if S is greater than one, it's an enlargement. Um, the center of enlargement, if you know about such things, um, so basically, if you've got some shape here, um, then to get, uh, it's fairly obvious, if, if for example, S was two, then this distance here is going to in increase by a factor of two. Um, this distance here is going to increase by a factor of two, and so on. You end up with a shape which is um, twice the size. And we tend to say that the, um, the points going, uh, if, well, okay, if you know what center of enlargement is, then the center of enlargement is, is the origin in the complex plane for such an enlargement. Okay, so scaling, that's the first time. Then we've also got rotation. So rotation is simply um, e to the i theta, e to the i phi times z. Okay, it's a pure rotation. And then we've got a translation which is just shifting the object. So then we've got um, W equals, well, I should say, so at phi, at phi is also any, any real number, but normally we would choose it to be between uh, zero and two pi. And beta can be any, any complex number. and it would tra translate the object by the real part of beta in the x direction and the real part, the imaginary part of beta in the y direction. So you can combine all of these three to give you some general linear transformation.